Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, I'm not a very healthy eater. Um, I like peanut butter, assorted carbs to put that peanut butter on. I like hamburgers, pizza, and Diet Mountain Dew. Oh, sure, I have, I have an occasional salad. I, I, I love corn, which sort of counts as a vegetable. But when I have a choice, I like peanut butter, assorted carbs to put that peanut butter on. I like hamburgers, I like pizza, and Diet Mountain Dew. A healthier diet is described for us today in our uh, first reading from Galatians chapter 5. It is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, an, an interesting coincidence is that the first three fruit all have one syllable, love, joy, peace. The, the second three have two syllables, patience, kindness, goodness. And the final three have three syllables, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'm not sure what that means, but it may help you if you're ever on Jeopardy. <laughs> now, I have the sense that I could, and that our society as a whole could eat a little healthier, eat a little bit more fruit, both in the, in the literal and the figurative, the, the theological sense. The Apostle Paul, a, a little earlier in Genesis or Galatians 5, expressed the contrast between healthy and unhealthy food. Paul's bad food menu includes fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, and carousing. And I think you can get fries with that, too. <laughs> now, I'm not someone who, who thinks that the world has gone to hell in a handbasket. There is so much that is good about the lives God has given us. But there's something that doesn't feel quite right either. In our politics and in our personal lives, there's a, a self-centeredness, a callowness that, that just seems to be kind of infecting us. And so I, I, I think it's important to look at the alternative diet that Paul offers us in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These virtues can, can, can strengthen us, and, strengthen us and, and guide us on a better way. Now, at this point, I could expound on each one of those nine fruit and uh, get your lives completely straightened out. But Valerie told me I've only got 15 minutes. And besides, I'm kind of getting hungry for some peanut butter. So I'm going to focus on one fruit today, kindness. Kindness. A few months ago, I was at a, uh, a funeral at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. Maybe you know it, it's right on 50th there, just uh, east of 100. And the priest, um, priest did something very simple that I, that I really liked. The, the last thing that she said before the service ended was a, was a, a sensible benediction. She, she held up her arms and she declared, life is short, be kind. And we were on our way. And I have to say, it, it really affected me. I found it really poignant. And so now as I uh, end every funeral that I do, I'm doing the same thing. Life is short. Be kind. Now, the question is, how do we do that, right? What does, what does our kindness look like? 
Well, actually, Titus 3, 4 in the New Testament tells us that Jesus is the kindness of God. It's actually a direct quote. Jesus is the kindness of God. So, so if we want to know what kindness is, it, it's probably going to help to look at Jesus. Because he's the kindness of God. And what does that kindness look like? Well, I think it's sensitive and understanding, sympathetic, forgiving, honest, truthful, affirming, positive. But mostly, mostly, Jesus notices people, right? He, he notices those who, who are seen by others as being insignificant. Jesus Jesus notices the children as the disciples try to shoo them away. Jesus Jesus notices the the widow in the temple who puts her two cents into the treasury. Jesus, Jesus notices the little guy who's up above him in the tree. And 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 the woman hemorrhaging blood. Who just, who just touches the hem of his garment and Jesus notices her. And I think it's that kindness that Jesus wants us to show others. Jesus wants us to notice people. And it seems to really matter to him. In Matthew 25, Jesus says that, that on the day of judgment, the one thing, the one thing we'll be judged on is how we treated other people people. And and those other people, he then informs them, they are him. He says, he says, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Now, those are actually small, fairly small acts of of kindness. Water, food, welcome. But it would seem like what we're talking about here is is not some minor issue. Jesus seems to be saying that kindness is at the heart of Christianity. So how are we going to do that? I, I think God places all kinds of opportunities in front of us to d- demonstrate kindness. So I got, a, I got an idea. I've got something I want you to do this week. I, I want you to call to mind this phrase. Here's my chance. Here's my chance. Say it after me. Here's my chance. Here's my chance. Here's my chance. Here's my chance. Good, good. All right, your, uh, your neighbor has just purchased a beautiful and very expensive new car. But they still have that same old lousy lawnmower. And the lawnmower just conks up, completely stops working. Instead of questioning their somewhat uh, miserable priorities, you walk next door with your own lawnmower and you say, here's my chance. Here's my chance. Or, or somebody hurts you. They, they, say, they say something that, that, that puts you down and makes them feel superior. Now this is a tougher one. But instead of responding in anger, you can say, here's my chance. Here's my chance to, to do things Jesus' way. Or, or you're at the grocery store and you're in you're in a long line and you're really in a hurry. But you see that there's a, an elderly person behind you who looks like they really need to sit down. And even though you're in, you're in a big hurry, you can say, you can invite, invite her to just go on ahead of you. Or you're driving down 101 after church today and, and, and a car switches lanes, cuts you off, and then slows way down in order to make a left turn. You are about to lay on the horn. You wonder why they weren't in church to hear the tall guy whose name you can't remember tell them about being kinder to you. But instead you think, 
here's my chance to do what, what Jesus taught me. Now, sometimes, sometimes you're going to fail at this. The moment's going to come and, and you're just going to miss it. Here's my story. Now, I have to tell you, I love the Hennepin County Library. I think it is the, the, the best use of my taxpayer dollars that I have ever known. It's good for me, but I think it's, it's good for the community. Everyone should read more. Okay, that was an aside. So I was at the, uh, at the library about six months ago now, and I was walking, walking by the main desk, and I was on my way out, and I, I heard a discussion going on. There was a, there was a, a, a mom with a, a, a little girl who was holding, she just had a pile of books in her arms, and, and it, it turns out that the, the mom had a library fine for um, $11 that I assume she hadn't paid in a very long time. And I want to I wanna stipulate that I don't know all the, the details, and I am not blaming anyone else. But the little girl was not going to be able to check out the books because of the $11 fine. Now, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm pretty careful with my money, but $11 means nothing to me. Here was my chance to say, you know, I can, I can pay that fine. And then a four-year-old little girl would get to take Harold and the Purple Crayon home to read. And I missed my chance. And I'm clearly still thinking about it. Some of the things I regret most in my life are failures of kindness. But here's the deal. If you miss your chance, the, the great news is, the next moment, there will be another chance. That's part of how grace works. So, so you're at home, and your, your loved one walks in the door, and they've had a bad day at work. And they start complaining about their boss, and it quickly slides into complaints about you. Now, it is really easy for that to escalate. Or you can say, here's my chance. Or you see, you see someone struggling at, 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 at work, and you, you think maybe you could help. You, you don't force yourself on the coworker, but maybe, maybe you say, you know, I could, I could help you with that if it would help. You say, here's my chance. Or, or there's a, a, a new kid at Wayzata High School. And they're walking around and they look a little bit lost. And, and, and you ask if you can help. And, and instead of just pointing them in the direction of the office, that's a big school. Instead of just pointing them, you walk with them to the office. You say, here's my chance. And, 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 and when you do take the chance, I want you to ask yourself this question. How did that feel? And I'll be very surprised if it doesn't feel very, very good. I want to read you a, a quote from a, a book from one of the, the kindness men that um, most of us have ever known, Mr. Rogers. He said this, If you could only sense how important you are to the lives of those you meet. There is something of yourself that you leave at every meeting with another person. There is something of yourself that you leave with every meeting with another person. Let that thing that you leave be a touch of kindness. Let's all try to eat a little healthier this summer. Life is short. Be kind. Amen.